For our demo, we're going to be using a tool called a galvanometer, and it's really just a special device to measure current or an ammeter. You can see that this measures things, the numbers represent microamps or millions of amps, and it's something the needle can swing to the right or to the left so it can measure current in, in particular directions. So I've got just a, a C cell battery, high potential, low potential side. Um, so we can just play around with this a little bit to see how this thing works. So I'm going to connect the black wire to the low potential or zero volt side. I'm just going to tap the red wire on the high potential side of the battery and we'll see what happens. You can see that as soon as I make an electrical connection, that needle swings to the right, it swings to the side that's connected to the high potential of the battery, and it's maxing out our meter. It's going way past 500 microamps. If I switch the battery, so we've got the positive side on the left, the negative side on the right, I'm going to hook it up to the zero. I'm just going to again tap to the high potential side. We can see that our galvanometer needle, our ammeter needle, swings to the left. So the needle swings in the direction that the high potential is. And so if the needle swings to the left, that means this side is a high potential, this side must be connected to the low potential side. It indicates that the current, in the, at least in the ammeter, the galvanometer is flowing from left to the right. So we're going to now use this tool to see if we can learn something about moving a wire through an external magnetic field. So for the actual demonstration, I've got a galvanometer hooked up to just two wires. So we just have a, a solid conducting wire, which are connected through here. And I can move this wire up and down. And as, I, as we would expect, this needle doesn't deflect to the left or right. We wouldn't expect that there would be any current flow in any direction through this wire. We don't have any sources of potential like our battery. And we're going to now bring in some large permanent magnets. Put this wire up here. And we have two magnets, uh, just a gap in between there. And if we look at our compass, we can see that in between the two magnets, red indicates the direction uh, of magnetic north. Um, and so we've got a magnetic field pointing in this direction. So with our magnet like this, magnetic field between these two permanent magnets will be pointing in this direction. And I guess the question is, if we take this neutral conductor and we move this thing and we quickly move it down through the magnetic field, would we expect there to be current flow? And if so, which direction would the needle deflect? And if we took it back up, which direction would we expect the current flow to be? So now just to confirm this from this perspective, again, we can see the direction that the net magnetic field is pointing in between those two magnets. And if we take our neutral conductor and now move it down through the external magnetic field, you can see that just a little bit, that needle had a small deflection to the right, which means, remember, the needle's going to deflect to the side that's acting or connected to a high potential. So if it swung to the right, that means this side was a higher potential than this side. This neutral conductor, when moving through a magnetic field, acted like a small source of potential, a source of change in electric potential, just like a battery. Well, let's find out what happens if we quickly move this wire up through the external magnetic field from the permanent magnets in that direction. Watch the needle carefully. Moving it up now. We can see that the magnet, sorry, the needle of the galvanometer deflected to the left just a little bit, about 10 or so microamps, which means when the conductor was moving upwards, this side was acting like the high potential side this side was acting like the low potential side, and so this thing acted like a battery in reverse, just a very weak battery. If we take this wire and move it down and up, you can see there's evidence of current flow that's switching directions when the neutral conductor, when the moving charges in the wire, are moving in different directions in that external magnetic field. So this shows us that a conductor when it's moving inside of a magnetic field, 
external to it, inside of that conductor, there's a potential difference that, potential difference that gets created, which causes current flow through it. 